DaVinci Resolve 18.5 introduces a new node called the Multi-Merge node. When coming from stuff like After Effects or pretty much any other video editor, most people are used to layer-based editing. I think the Multi-Merge node will help close that gap as far as the, as far as the learning curve from layer-based to node-based editing. Let's talk about it. So I'm in the Fusion Composition. I'm gonna grab a background node, the output, and connect it to the input of the media out. Then I'm gonna hit Control and Space, Multi-Merge. You'll notice here, I actually have two of them. This one here is actually from Reactor. I meant to do a video on it, but completely forgot about it. But this is the new multi-merge. That's from DaVinci themselves. And you notice over in the Inspector tab, you have the layer list. So those of you who are coming from After Effects or pretty much most video editors that are used to layers, this is gonna be a game changer. So if I go back here and to grab a background node and connect it, of course you don't see nothing change because the background nodes still have the same color. I'm gonna go to the Inspector tab and I'm gonna turn up the red. With the merge node selected, I'm gonna grab another background node and another. This background two, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna turn up the green. This background four, I'm gonna turn up the blue. Now with the merge node selected, you see there's three different layers. You can actually move these layers around. Layer one, which is actually highlighted here. If you zoom in, you'll notice the input line in between the merge, merge and the background is actually glowing. So each time you select one, it glows in correspondence to the node that it's connected to. Of course, you can double click on these to actually rename them. So layer one, which is the background two, this one I actually turned up the red on. So if I go back into my merge, double click, I can change the name to red. For further organization, you can go into the node itself, click on it and change its name as well. Clicking back on my merge node and I select layer two, which if you go back to the background, on that one I turned up the green, if we go back here and I want the green on top, I can move it up to the top. If you've been compositing in Fusion for a while, each one of these still operate more or less the same. So if I click on the red and grab a transform node, the transform will only move the red background. So if I go red background, so if I go back here to the merge node, move red back to the top, click on the transform, it only will move the, the red around. If I click on that background and actually bring in, say for instance, an ellipse mask, it's going to create ellipse around the red. So go to the background two, create an ellipse. Then if I go to background four, bring in another ellipse, that creates another mask. And each one of them, I can grab a transform node, and I can move them around independently. Now back into the merge node, each layer has its own set of controls. So if I'm on the first layer or layer red, all these controls will only affect this. Now here, you can also, you can use this as a transform. I always prefer to use a transform node though, to separate things. And say for instance, on the red, I want the red to kind of cross over or blend in with the other two colors. I can go to my apply mode and select screen. Then it will cross blend the colors, but they will only affect just the reds. And so now for instance, I go to layer two and I change this to luminance. It's only gonna affect green, which is the layer two. And then say for instance, layer three, if I want to use this as a mask to cut something out, I can go here to operators and go down to stencil. and basically gonna create a transparency background. Now the way this will work before the multi-merge node, if I hold shift and remove the multi-merge node, I'll take the output of this transform, connect it to my background, connect this to the merge, and it'll create three separate merges. Say for instance, if I want this blue to go behind the red, I have to remove all these nodes and move them to the front. So I select all these, hold shift, move it over, wait for the line to change to the blue and yellow, let go, and then it'll connect. So now it's there. So if I want to move any of this color around, that's the process I have to go through. But say for instance, I want to animate it, I'm pretty much gonna have to create keyframes on each one of these merge, mess around with the apply mode, and it, take, it can be done, but it takes a little bit more extra steps. Versus if I remove all these, bring them back in the multi-node, each time you connect anything, it will actually create a new output. So if I grab another background node, they create another node, I can actually select the merge node and just continuously select background nodes. If I wanted to do the same thing with moving the position of the blue and red, of course I can go over here and just move them, move them around. But if I want to animate it, I can do that as well. And it's easier to do with just basically two keyframes. So I can go over my first position and activate the keyframe by clicking on this little diamond here. Say for instance, I go about 20 frames in, move this up and it animates. You can even go into the spline editor to smooth it out, things like that, but it's not necessary for this. Now, if you have some keyframes or something like that set in, you want to remove them, do not double click. Usually you will just double click and it will, it will just reset that particular parameter, 
but this case it will actually reset the multi merge node so it'll reset any settings anything you made select somewhere within this space right click and just select remove multi merge one layer order they'll get rid of the keyframe now you still have a mask input which is this blue input here so if i go up here to one of my masks i just select save the rectangle it's going to connect to the blue input and anything connected to this merge node will be masked out another cool functionality if you don't want everything just connected to one merge you can select one and then go to split here. And what this is going to do is going to separate the merge. So within this merge here, I go to the transform. We're going to move around. The only one is still active in that merge is the green. So if I go to the second multi merge, it has my red circle along with my layer two, which is the blue circle. That's good for, say, instance, you want to mask out a portion of your composition and not the whole thing. So you actually go and select the merge and you still have the mask input here. And then just select one of your masks. And basically, I just created an ellipse with an ellipse. Now, this might look confusing, but you can actually organize it quite well. You can select all your nodes for a particular part of your composition. Hit Control G and create a group. And if you wanted to, you can go in here, hit F2, and just name it, let's say, Layer Layer 2. Go back to the Merge node. You see you on Layer 2. Your group is named Layer 2. You can simply double click, and you can still still go back and make any further alterations. But something else you can do as well is select your nodes, hit Control and Space type in underlay now underlay was actually it's similar to the group because if you click on it it'll move the nodes around and everything but it doesn't can collapse it down into this little one single node and then with this here you can just simply highlight the size and move them around and open it up make it bigger and wider if you need and of course you can still add nodes so i got to transform and i want to add another background i can simply do that it's going to create another merge within this composition and once again still moving around whereas with the group you can pretty much do the same thing but the group is more confined whereas the structure of the box itself if i go in here and create a merge you see here's kind of cut off on the side the only thing you have to do is just simply open it up so you can see it and then once you're done you can just collapse it back down have you updated 18.5 if so have you came across any bugs or glitches so far my transition has been completely smooth i remember when i updated to 18 it was like really buggy and glitchy and I had to actually downgrade back to 17. This here has actually been a lot better. It's not quite 19, but 18.5 is a new step forward. And that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Until the next video, y'all be easy.